Less than 20 miles from Brooksby College lie the villages of Little and Great Casterton, sitting in the midst of fertile Rutland land. It is here that generations of the Knight family have farmed. Over 50 years of farming has left Ron Knight with a passion for old farm machinery. He discovers much of the equipment as scrap before lovingly restoring it. The restored equipment recalls a bygone age of steam, smoke and kerosene. The gleaming rows of bodywork cloak huge, optimistic American engines, suggesting romantic images of the 20th century where technology was an opening into a new utopian future. But for Ron Knight, the collection also brings a reminder of the working practices of the past. This is a uh, sack lift or a sack barrow that was used behind the thrashing drum uh, 30, 40 years ago, you know, during the, the, the Second World War. It was the most dangerous thing out. You wound your 200, 200 weight sack up to the maximum height, or 100 kilograms, and then you would attempt to take the sack off the top. You can imagine it balancing on the top there. And you wind it up, and then you had to get it on your back and lift it off. And if you wasn't careful, the catch or the handle flew around and trapped everybody. Most dangerous. I uh, worry about these machines that are left uh, uh, unattended in uh, museums and car parks, which are not safe. And children don't know what they are. And they note the places where one can get his fingers in. Many a young lad who's done it has had his fingers chopped off with it. The Knight family doesn't only have a farm, but an agricultural equipment factory as well. Knight makes crop sprayers, and they are crop sprayers made with health and safety firmly in mind. This is the latest uh, crop sprayer manufactured in the UK. It holds all the safety devices that can be applied to a spray at present. It's a 24 metre gullwing boom. This folds out horizontal steadily, then flipping over to fetch electric wires down. This is an health and safety uh, requirement. The electric wires are quite dangerous. Uh, it also uh, has all the safety features regarding applying chemical into the tank. This is a uh, system where you can wash the can out so that empty cans have a residue left in the bottom. You press the can on there and the, uh, and the water will fly up and it will wash the bottom of the can out. All the water going around this system, washing out in this, is clean water, which is directly from when it's filling the chem uh, sprayer off. Also, it has a safety feature which circulates the chemical back round to the tank, puts clean water in the lines where you can get the jets off and you have no chemical at all dripping on you when you apply the chemical. Also, he can got the clean water system here where he can wash his hands. If he gets the chemical on his clothes, he can just store them in there and he can keep his clean ones in the top so when he gets into his tractor cab, he will not uh, contaminate the cab. Chemicals are sprayed on fields to make them more productive and on crops as a protection against pests, but they're used in other ways too. After cutting, this pasture grass will be collected and used as a winter feed on Brooksby's dairy farm. But before it can be used as a feed, it will be treated with chemicals to break the grass down into silage, a sweet-smelling sludge which cows adore. At Little Casterton, there's only a day left before the working weekend. Equipment has been gathering for days, delivered by proud owners and the local organisers of the event. Tractors and steam engines providing the power will be linked through a complex collection of belts to drive the open cogs and chains of harvesters and threshers. 
but it's only now, as the enthusiasts begin to arrange and assemble the equipment, that they will discover whether the separate pieces can really be joined into a working system. Modern farm equipment is much more self-contained, and much of its complexity is hidden from view behind streamlined outer shells. Today, it's not a mechanism, but the complex links which connect agriculture and the environment, which are increasingly on public display. With barely a few daylight hours left before the public descends on Arthur Hinch's field, final checks are being made to ensure success. I mean, do you have any idea how many people come? There will probably be about 500 people here tomorrow, probably about 1,000 to 1,500 over the weekend. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is that the exhibitors enjoy themselves. It's more a day for the exhibitors as well as a day for the public. Um, and uh, I think most people, most of the exhibitors, get enjoyment from putting on a show for the public, but they also get enjoyment from playing with the machines they've been restoring all over the, the, the winter months. Um, so we'll see if this one will work, fresh from restoration. The enthusiasm of the working weekend participants knows no bounds. Even the corn itself is an antique variety. This wheat was specially sown in the spring. This is a spring variety. Late in the spring, so as it was matured like the prairie in America to suit the combines. Now, all these combines that we've got come off the prairie during the war, and this is sown to represent the prairie. And if you look across this, this is what the prairie would look like in America. Now, our wheat would look four times better than this, and the combines wouldn't handle it. So it's had to have been sown to suit the combines, the, the, the vintage combines, that is. So it's sown for the weekend? Especially for the weekend. Talk about eccentricity. Well, there you are. There's four acre here. Thank <music> you.